excuse me, I need some uh, directions. Could you give me some directions here, please? I'm trying to find the Fillmore. Fillmore? Lord Fillmore? Come in here, stole a whole set of wrenches from me, and told everybody I loaned them to him, you know, damn good well. They just come in here and took them, and I wasn't even here. No, 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 no. The no. hell, he didn't. No, 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 I'm talking about the, the, the Fillmore Theater. He don't own the theater. Raise hogs in on Reynoldsburg Road, and he's got a nice place. No, 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 no. Look, I'm, my name is Blake Clark. I'm a comedian. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm doing an, an HBO special at the Fillmore Theater, and I need to know how to get there. From here? No, from across the street. Could you go over there and yell it back? Of course, from here. You want to know the easiest way? No, I would like to make it even more difficult than it already is. Of course, I want to know the easiest way. I'm late. I have to get... I'm... Oh, look you at You see this street right here? Yeah. All right. Here's what you do. You pull out here, uh -huh. go down about a mile and a half to where John C. Hill's store used to be. It okay. burned down, you know. Yeah. You take a right there, you head off down... Wait, 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 wait. If it burnt down, how am I going to know where it is? I don't care about some store. Just please tell me how to get to the Fillmore. Lord Fillmore burn it down. I don't care who burned it down. I'm going to burn your place down. If you don't... Look, I'm a comedian. This is my big break. I've been working eight years for this. Please, just tell me how to get to the Fillmore in San Francisco. What? Well, I gotta go that way anyway. Why don't you follow me and, and, and turn about a mile before I do? What? Oh, looks like I'm never gonna get there. You guys will probably get there before I will, so just wait for me, okay? Uh, sir? From San Francisco's fabulous Fillmore, One Night Stand, starring Blake Clark. Gentlemen, please welcome Blake Clark. How you guys doing? Hi, my name is Blake Clark. I'm from. Thank you very much. I, uh, I'm from Georgia originally. Well, thank you very much. Hey, I didn't start the place. I was just born there. Okay. Except no responsibility for it. I was born in Georgia, born and raised in Georgia, and I fought in Vietnam. That's kind of like being punished for the same thing twice. <laughs> but I used to have flashbacks in Vietnam. So I, uh... I live in L.A. now. I live in Los Angeles, and I, I guess I've started... Well, thank you very much. I guess I've, uh, I've started to adapt which is scary when a southerner starts adapting to life in Los Angeles. When I first moved out there, I couldn't, like, relate. And, uh... It's real... It's real important that you, like, relate. In Los Angeles. See, I spoke like a southerner. I still talk like a southerner. I say stuff like, I'm fixing to get ready. Now, for some reason... This just frosted most of the ass of the Southern Californians, i.e. Los Angeles. Because they'd say stuff like, oh, yeah? So like, so, like, how do you do that, dude? So, like, how do you fix to get ready? <laughs> now I'm going to get ready. Dude. When I first moved out here, to Los Angeles. I still had Georgia license plates on my car. I found out real quick that's the big mistake. You shouldn't drive around anywhere outside the South with Georgia license plates on your car. It's like putting a big neon sign on the back of your car that goes, hey, look at here. Here's a dumbass. Hey, look. Hey, 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 hey. Yo, look at here. Because people ride by, they always do this. People ride by, and when they pass the car, they always do this. They look over in the car. <laughs> Like they expect to see pigs and goats and farm animals in the back. <laughs> like the two guys from Deliverance are going to be sitting back there. So. <laughs> Deliverance was filmed in Georgia using real Georgians. <laughs> that helped our image a lot, didn't it? Wee <laughs> wee. <laughs> of course, certain guys saw that movie. Well, where is this river? <laughs> One thing, too, in, in Los Angeles, when you have Georgia license plates on your car, people yell at you. They do. They yell. Everything has got to be your fault because you're from Georgia. I, this happened to me now. I was backing out of this parking space, minding my own business. 
I don't bother people down there. They shoot at each other on the freeways down there. Oh, I mean, it's got to be somebody blinks their headlights. Now I hit the floorboard. I don't even take chances anymore. It's scary. I won't even let my wife drive. She drives so slow I can hear guns cocking a mile back. You know, it's scary. My wife drives so slow, she f***s off Japanese drivers, okay? That's the Kind of like a competition down there. Everybody's trying to outdo the other person. I was on the San Diego freeway. Guy drove by through a pit bull in my car. <laughs> I dropped off in the Vietnamese neighborhood. <laughs> okay. 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 Fine. All right. Vietnamese don't eat dogs. <laughs> I made it all up. Vietnamese eat dogs. American. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Americans talk to dogs. Which is worse. Americans make dogs wear coats and sweaters and things. And there's always these little dogs that they make wearing these little lassa holes and shih tzus, you know? These little... Whatever they're called. I saw this in the catalog. It had this dog in there. It was a Neiman Marcus catalog. The dog has got a Neiman Marcus sweatshirt on with a hood and a pocket. And the dog's standing there like this. You know what's going on in the dog's mind. Get this thing off of me. <laughs> Somebody please get off. I'm a damn dog. <laughs> dogs don't even sweat. We pant. <laughs> People talk to dogs. People talk to dogs. I have this neighbor, because he lives next door. <laughs> he's got, he's got a, a big dog, a Rottweiler. You know what? Yeah, you know what kind of dog it is? Looks like a Doberman on steroids. <laughs> the guy leaves him out in the backyard at night, every morning, 3 a.m. You can set your watch by it. The dog starts... Row, 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 row. Two, three, four... Row. Row. They do that pause, so you'll start to go back to sleep. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and big dogs do this. Big dogs will do... Row, 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 row. <laughs> they do. I thought of a, uh, I thought of the dog equivalent of a human. So then, <laughs> another thing too. So then. Now the dog's master, smart guy, been to college. Well, Southern Cal. He comes out. <laughs> Making this up, man. A guy comes out on the back porch, three o'clock in the morning, and he goes, Rex, Rex, what are you barking at? <laughs> like the dog's gonna stop barking and start talking. <laughs> but the dog can talk, he'd be going, hey! Hey, 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 being from the South, I've seen this happen. A guy will be duck hunting. He'll be in a duck blind with his dog sitting next to him. The duck will fly over. He'll shoot at him. Boom, boom. Miss the duck. He'll look at the dog. <laughs> oh, he will. He'll look at the dog. Like the dog's going to go. <laughs> Give me the gun you sit down here, all right? Or get me a sweatshirt or something. It's cold. <laughs> That's another thing. It's, hunting is a way of life in the South. I used to, I used to hunt, but I don't know. After Vietnam, it's really not that much of a sport anymore. You know. So, no, no. I'm not saying I prefer to kill human beings. On the contrary, I'm just saying that killing defenseless animals isn't that much of a thrill anymore. It'd be, it'd be different if they shot back. You know, seven hunters go out, two come back. You know, I wouldn't see quite as many guys on that American Sportsman show on television, would you? Hey, you want to do our show? No. Oh, hell, I, I killed everybody on there last week. Oh, I'm going to Beirut and relax. <laughs> My brother's a big hunter. He, he's also a big fisherman. See, he li there are two kind of guys in the South. My brother still lives in Georgia. He's two kind of guys in the South. Good old boys and rednecks. The difference is good old boys may raise livestock. Rednecks get emotionally involved. <laughs> Okay, you're making a value judgment over there. I don't think that's what I do. 
<laughs> also, a redneck's idea of foreplay is, hey, bitch, you awake? My brother, my brother lives in, but I'm sure you know someone like He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Not the smartest guy in the world, but he's a nice guy. I was home back uh, a couple of months ago, and he asked me, what does your son want for Christmas? So I said, oh, gee, I don't know. Uh, he likes you too. Why don't you get him a tape by you too? I swear to God, he looked at his wife. <laughs> Us? He leased his cars. He's in charge of the rental department at Riverside Ford in Macon, Georgia. Hey, he gave you a plug. Anyway, he's gonna let me use a car. He's gonna let me use a car when I'm home. So he comes over. This is, I'm not making this up. This is a true story. He comes over to my mom's house. He goes, "Come on outside. I want to explain the car to you." <laughs> so I went outside for him to explain the car to me. I thought I was gonna get some kind of in-depth explanation of working an internal combustion engine. No, I swear. He holds up the keys. He goes. Square key goes to the door, round key goes to the trunk. Square key won't open the trunk, round key won't open the door. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, who the hell's he been leasing cars to? Because I'm no road scholar, but if I put the round key in the door and it doesn't work, I'm not going to go, well, f it, I'm walking. Yeah. And he also, he's real dramatic, my brother. He's real dramatic. He never says anything simply. He could, I mean, he couldn't say that the car is equipped with an automatic choke. If you depress the accelerator in the morning, you're going to flood it. You're going to have trouble starting it. He goes, in the morning, you get up, it's cold, you step on the gas, call a tow truck. <laughs> you fixing to get ready? <laughs> That's called a callback. It's something you set up early and you call it back. <laughs> My brother's a dear. I like my brother. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. I don't know why. I don't think bass can swim 65 miles an hour. I'm not sure about this, but I... I don't know. Maybe he catches them and takes them skiing or something. I don't know. I don't know. Someone to... Maybe he takes that catch and release a little, a little further. He takes it a step further, catch and recreates what my brother does. I don't know. But he, he never catches anything to begin with because he, he spent like uh, $25,000 on this boat, motor, and trailer, another $10,000 on all these gears and, 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 and gadgets and fishing tackle, and another $20,000 on this pickup truck, and he lives in a mobile home. <laughs> yeah, his, his wife is real pleased with her lot in life. <laughs> Spun that matrimony wheel of fortune. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Oh, great, bass fisherman, wonderful. <laughs> Wow, no meat coat in this lifetime. <laughs> and like I said, he never can. He uses these plugs that are like 12 inches long. They're red and white. They have hooks hanging all off them. The fish are only 15 inches long. <laughs> They're down there going, <laughs> oh, what was that? <laughs> you see that thing? Looks like a torpedo with grappling hooks on it. <laughs> it's going 65 miles an hour. <laughs> to make a losing eye. <laughs> oh, it comes again. <laughs> and he's a big hunter. He likes to go hunting. He, he, this, this happened. Now, he comes in my room like 6 o'clock in the morning and goes, Hey, Blake. 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 <laughs> you sleep? <laughs> Fix to get ready. <laughs> See, I'm just doing that for myself, okay? <laughs> No, he does. He says, come on, let's go out there go, come on and get whipped there and go deer hunt. I didn't know what this meant. I, I thought we were going for donuts, so I got up. You can tell I don't miss too many donuts, so we're out deer hunting at 6 o'clock in the morning. You don't hunt deer in Georgia. You ambush them. You get in a deer stand. You wait for the deer to come by, and you just shoot them. You don't ask them any questions. You don't ask them where they've been. You don't want to see their ID or nothing. You just shoot them. So I'm standing there with my brother, 6 o'clock in the morning, feeling like an idiot because I don't even have a gun. <laughs> Guess I'm going to, come on, come on. <laughs> anyway, I'm standing there. This is a true story. I'm not making this up. This is true. I'm standing there with my brother, and he takes out his wallet. And he's got a camouflage wallet. <laughs> I said, what, what is that? 
And he went, a camouflage wallet? <laughs> so, well, yeah, I mean, I can see that, but, you know, but why? I hunt. <laughs> well, yeah, if you drop it out here, you're gonna hunt, all right. And you're like, what? <laughs> Where is that thing? And he's wearing an orange hat. <laughs> he's got a camouflage wallet and an orange hat. So I said, well, well, what about the hat? And then he went, deer, as most people know, are colorblind. <laughs> well, that certainly explains the camouflage wallet then. <laughs> I said, how do you know they're colorblind? He really said this. He went, well, they tested them. <laughs> yeah, I guess they got him in a big building. They gave him pencil and paper and went, what color is this hat? What color is this hat? The deer out there going. Psst. Hey. Is it orange? Oh, damn, I can't tell. You. Is it red? I can't tell. That's a camouflage wallet he's got. What color is that damn hat? Call the capital punishment is not a deterrent to crime. Yes, it is. It might not be a deterrent to the next guy. But that guy, it's a deterrent. <laughs> it's a justice system, folks. The justice system in this country doesn't work. Never has, never will. It's based on 12 people not smart enough to get out of jury duty. Think about it. <laughs> it's run by lawyers. It's run by lawyers. You know what you got when you got three lawyers up to their neck? It's <laughs> not enough. <laughs> Cross a lawyer with a pit bull, you get a dishonest pit bull. Here's an example of justice in the 80s. A guy goes in, he robs a bank, he shoots the teller. He's on videotape. 50 witnesses see him perpetrate the crime. He gets in a gun battle with the police in the bank. They catch the guy in the bank. They handcuff the guy in the bank. They take him outside and they call him a suspect. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> They're not sure if this is the same guy they handcuffed 15 seconds ago. Check the videotape. Then he goes to trial. It takes 10 or 11, 12 months. Naturally, he's found guilty. He's on videotape, 50 witnesses. But then he appeals in another four or five years. Meanwhile, he's written three bestsellers. He's got a movie of the week. He's on the Oprah show. He's on Phil's show. And the teller still got a bullet. If you want to put these guys on television, put them on people's court. Judge Watford's the only decent judge we have in this country. He comes back in two minutes with a decision no appeal. That's a commercial. He comes back. He's made a decision. You go talk to Doug Llewellyn. It ain't that hard. It ain't that hard. Hundreds of billions of dollars on defense. And what are they buying with your money? They got this thing called a stealth bomber. You heard of this thing? Yeah. This invisible bomber? Folks, is it me? Come here. Come here. We're spending a hundred billion dollars on invisible bombers. <laughs> and some southerner sold Reagan the idea. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. President. There's 30 of them right over there. <laughs> right over there. <laughs> you come back tomorrow, we have 30 more for you. Star Wars weapons and planes only the president can see. But they're not telling you about these Star Wars weapons that they want. They also want the action figures that go with them. <laughs> Hundreds of billions of... And they're building all these sophisticated weapons, these computerized weapons, state-of-the-art, sophisticatedly advanced technology. Who's going to run all these weapons? You're taking money away from education, you're going to end up with a guy like, That's right. <laughs> I'm a nuclear missile technician. <laughs> I work on nuclear missiles. I used to work at 7-Eleven, but I couldn't figure out the <laughs> safe. <laughs> now, now I work on nuclear missiles. Well, I was working on this missile right here. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> He's here a minute ago because I was working on it. 
Let me see, I better figure out where that thing went. Bring what all them burn marks are right there. Anyway, I, let me see, uh, I, think, I think I got hungry, yeah. And I wanted something to eat, so I pressed that red button mark lunch. <laughs> Reading skills are indeed important, boys and girls. <laughs> Reading skills are important. Hundreds of billions of dollars on defense. Your tax, you work, don't you, sir? Of course you do. What do you do, sir? Got any idea? <laughs> you work with Holiday Inn. You pay your taxes, too, don't you, sir? By God, sure you do. You know what they're doing with your money? The Pentagon takes your dollars, your money, your money, and they go out and they pay like $800 for a hammer, $650 for a screwdriver. And then the IRS, speaking of screwdrivers, <laughs> The IRS tells me I owe them $17,000 in taxes. Yeah, I sent them a Black & Decker skill saw. I said, keep the change. 